if you want to forecast the hist of data really ah, damn it hello everyone welcome back to my youtube channel today i want to talk about something very basic but at the same time i think very important i hope it will be useful for you i recently joined a new project called neptune which is building a metadata store tools for data scientists and machine learning engineers and to be honest, the first thing I wanted to do when I joined this business that is so AI focused, that caters to AI industry, I wanted to refresh my understanding of basic notions within artificial intelligence field and also understand better the relations between them. So that means that recently for the past couple of weeks I was studying <laughs> AI again and I want to share this knowledge with you. I think it will be very useful no matter what you do, no matter if you're already working with AI or somehow want to work with AI in the future, or perhaps you're just curious about the subject per se. I think uh, it's useful for all of us to understand the basic concepts behind it. So that's why I decided to create a series that will be dedicated to the topic of machine learning. I will divide it into a couple of parts and each part will represent the most important basic area within machine learning. Let's get down to it. So what is machine learning? The goal of machine learning is to predict results based on the incoming data. And that's basically it. Every machine learning task can be represented that way or is not a machine learning task altogether. The greater the variety in the data samples you have, the easier it will be to find the relevant patterns and predict the results. And to teach the machine, we need three elements, data, features, and algorithms. Let's look closer at all of them. Data really depends on the type of goal you want to achieve with machine learning. If, for example, you want to detect spam, you will need samples of spam messages. If you want to forecast the stock price, you probably want the price history. The more diverse the data, the better result is achieved. There are two ways to get the data, manual and automatic. Manually collected data contains far fewer errors but it's more time consuming and more costly to collect. Automatic collection of data is cheaper. You basically gather anything you can find and then you sort of hope for the best. Some companies ask their own customers to label data for them for free. For example, you have probably come across the reCAPTCHA, which asks you to select all the bridges, select all the traffic lights, etc. This is how Google makes you label their data. So next time you do that, you know what it's for anyway. It's extremely tough to create a good collection of data. And this is so important and so crucial that companies even tend to share the algorithms they are working on, but they rarely share their data. Features, also known as parameters or variables. Those could be as diverse as stock price, user's gender, or word frequency in a text. Features are the factors for the machine to look at. Now, if the data is in a table format, this is relatively straightforward. The features then are the names of the columns in the table. But what do you do when you have a data set containing 100 gigabytes of cute puppy pics? Selecting the right features usually takes way longer than all the other ML parts. And features is also the main source of errors because people that choose them are subjective and find some features more important or like more than others. And finally, algorithms. So when you try to solve a problem, it can be solved differently. The method you will choose will affect the precision, performance and size of the final model. There is one important thing here though. If your data is not good enough, even the best kind of algorithm will not help you. It's also referred to as garbage in, garbage out. So it's really important to acquire as much data and as diverse and good quality data as possible. It's also really helpful to understand the relationships between artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, neural nets, and how it all comes together. 
Here is a really good picture that shows who's who. Artificial intelligence is the name of the whole field of knowledge. Think of it as equivalent to biology, chemistry, mathematics. It's basically a branch of science. Within artificial intelligence, we have a subset of methods called machine learning. It's just a subset of it. An important one, but not the only one. Now, within machine learning, there are dozens of methods and neural nets are only one type of methods within machine learning. And finally, deep learning is a new method of using neural networks. It's basically a new type of architecture.